Well, good afternoon. My name's Ken Newton. I'm uh, from Down Under. Uh, this is uh, something that I hate doing, so I hope we get through it OK. What I've done, I've done a presentation and I've also put the verbiage in so that I don't lose track of what I want to say, because that's the problem I have these days. So, um, as you can see, this is um, uh, what's going to come up is what I've called my rotary curve linear to design that I came up with about eight years ago, and the following photos will show the progression of what I've done to date. So let's see what happens. So there we go. So that's the setup of the nose of my lathe. Don't take any notice of the gearing there. That's just another application. On the nose, you'll see there's the uh, main the mandrel of the main shaft of the lathe, and then this is what I call a a, um, a, a slave. Um, shaft or something like that, an idler shaft to hold the pattern um, piece and it also fits with a timing gear between the two so that it runs uh, one to one. I could probably change that in, in later years if I wanted depending on how far I want to develop it. So here we go again. So this is a cross slide that I've made up. The main screw slide is about uh, 12 inches long, 300 millimetre in, your, uh, in my language, and that's something that I've made up myself. It's made from uh, cast spheroidal graphite, and the cross slide block, uh, which is under the, where is it? The cross slide block there is, is aluminium, um, and the top platform with all the stuff on it is um, three, 13 millimetre industrial formica. The rubber, which is there, is attached to an adjustable slide and the whole platform is attached to the cross slide and the movement is by a lever. Now that lever here, in, in my situation with my lathe, uh, I don't have to use that lever to push the rubber up against the um, template because my lathe has a fixed head and I operate on a, a, a platform which is on lineal bearings. So I don't have a rocking head. Uh, to me, the rocking heads, they won't go there. Okay. Uh. <coughs> so, yeah, the tool holder is, is attached to that arm there, which is also adjustable, but um, that you'll probably see later on is only an adjustment depending on from when I get to the template that I put in, to the uh, ratio of that to the final job that I want to make, uh, that's an adjustment for that. So I think I've covered all that. Okay. So this is just a, um, a workpiece which is set into the uh, top uh, chuck, if you want to call it that, compression chuck, and uh, the pattern piece which in this case is there, just a square block, tapered block, um, and that's on the idler shaft. And then I've, I've attached the live centre there just to support the pattern shaft because of the pressure uh, associated with the um, possible length of it. So that's the first profile you can see that um, the rubber here is rubbing against that square template while that's rotating and then because of the rubber as it rotates it picks up the high points of the square and consequently that gives you the rounding profiles at the top. So this is the first real attempt at um, trying to do something and you can see that uh, as this rotates you can see that flat section there equates to that inversion there as it goes around and then on the inside conversely it does it when I'm on the inside and you can see the final shape there and what I don't know whether I've got it on the next, it's so long ago since I wrote this. As you can see that on that finished piece from the top, 
that peak to the bottom is a straight line where the rest of the shape is as per the template that I've made, which is, you can see up in that top corner up there, you can see the profile and you can see the straight line there better actually. And that's because the, um, just the way it works, I don't know how or why. So you can see the two pieces together. And with this one here, I put a lip on the template. Uh, so that comes out in the final, final job. So this is the second attempt by um, sloping the top face of the workpiece um, up there. Whoops. Where is it? Up there on the top view. By sloping that top face with the um, amplitude of the application, it tends to put a peak on the top of the piece, which just adds another dimension to it, I think. So this is the third attempt, and this is after a little bit more development. I, the um, modified uh, pattern or template, whichever you want to call it, is there, and it's got two flats on it. So therefore I get a, a double inversion. And uh, I found through trial and error that I can't have them opposing because when you get on the inside, there's not enough room for the for the cutter, it fails on, on the opposite side well, as it's cutting. So I had to um, come in at uh, around about 120 degrees. And that's it, that's the finished piece. Uh, very pleasing in my eyes. You can see the peaks up the top, and that's because of the tapered end on the, um, of the, of the uh, timber. And then down on the inside, you can see it's a straight line from top to bottom um, on the inside as it is on the outside. Oops, down there. This piece will be out on display later on anyway, so. Um, that's it. So, yeah. So, as I say there, there's um, plenty of scope for the future. Change the ratios timing gears, phase it. Um, I don't know where it'll go. As I said there, I may never explore the, the possibilities of it, but the idea is out there um, if you want to do it. So that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Question. How, yeah. how are you making the pattern, the lower? How are you making the, the start? Uh, straight off the uh, ordinary lathe. I'm sorry, ordinary lathe? No, off my ordinary lathe. Ordinary. Standard lathe, yeah. Um, depends on what you want to make. There's all sorts of, you know, you could put them on a... Depends on what shape you want. As I said, I turn that, in this case, uh, on my uh, conventional lathe, and then I, I cut the flat off it or sand the flats on them. Um, and in this case, I wanted the, the inversion, as I call it, from top to bottom to be a straight line from top to bottom. So therefore, I put the flat on, the, on my template piece, and then that goes for the full length. Um, The lower? The lower, the lower shaft, that's, that's yeah. actually your, your rosette. Yeah, that's right, yeah. That, that's the curve of linear, if you want to call it. Your touch and your cutter are traveling simultaneously. That's correct. And they're on the trolley, yeah. Because, in, as I said, in my situation, the cutter and all that um, the, um, is all on the trolley. So that moves in unison. And, and uh, as, the, as the rubber is rubbing on the block, on the template, the top one is cutting, and I can adjust that ratio any way I like. But up to date, that's the way it's been anyway. Are you introducing a further curvilinear pattern to the shape of the linear Well, that's, that's, the, that's on the shape of the, um, where are we, how do we go back? Um, yeah, hang on, 
That one there, okay? So that shows the template at the bottom. That's the pattern. That, that, that's what I call the. That's why I call it a rotary curve linear for the one and word because normally that's where you put your your, your template for your curve linear, yeah. and your rubber would go up against that. But in this situation, because it's rotating, I decided to call it a rotary curve linear just for the sake of whatever. Sorry. How do I get what? Yeah, that's, be that's because it's a bar. Yeah, well, it's a round bar, actually, because um, if I had a flat bar, if I wanted to follow any curve, I wouldn't be able to do that. So I've got a round bar. So the, the touch point is, uh, as it travels longitudinally, um, is only touching at that point of the, of the round bar. If I had a flat bar, it's vertical, yeah. It's, Yeah, there it is down there, yeah. So, oh Jesus. So, yeah, we're all caught up. Oh, yeah. As this rotates, you with me? As that rotates, that's rotating as well. So. This bar coming down here, as it gets to the point, it, it's starting to bring bring the cutter back out around there. And as this flattens up, that's when it comes in to there. So as it comes over the next point, it'll come back out again. And that's how you get that effect. <coughs> if I have a pointed, if I have a pointed rubber, or or a round bearing, you know, like a conventional rubber then it's going to follow the template completely. So it, it, would, it would then create a flat. It wouldn't have that inversion because the, the, uh, t the uh, rubber being long picks up on that point like I just said and that brings it back out and then it goes back in again and then it gets onto the flat. So that's the concept of it anyway. <coughs> 